Hello and welcome to episode 239. We're going to have a remote button that only runs one time. What do I mean by remote button? Well, a button that is floating. So we're not attaching a command block to it. Now we can check it. So let's do a little check. This is going to be our controller. And we'll check if someone presses the button. So let's get the coordinates of it. Fill, tap, tap, tab. And we'll use those in here. Right, repeat. Execute. <laughs> That's a good start. Execute if block at those coordinates. Uh, polished. Blackstone, oh, Blackstone button, powered equals true. Okay, so if it's a Blackstone button and it's powered, then we will run, say, hi. Okay, done. Pretty simple. Let's press the button. Helps if we turn it on, I suppose. Let's press the button. Ah, so there's the problem. It doesn't run one time, it runs a lot of times. So, let's make a little bit of a change. Now what you could do is after you ran this command, you could just remove this button and replace it with a button that's off or unpowered. That works. The problem is, you need to know which direction the button is facing, you need to know where the button is. We already need to know that, so that's not a problem. And you need to know what type of button it is. So it's not great. There's an easier way though, which uh, I saw was an answer from. Well, you could probably guess who it's from. It's from Gal Sergi, and it uses a scoreboard objective, and it's quite a nice little solution. So let's have a setup, and we'll make ourselves a scoreboard objective. Now this is either going to hold a zero or a one, so you could call this a boolean if you wanted. I'm going to call it state because it's going to hold the state of the button. And it's going to be a dummy. Let's create that. And then we're going to go back in here. And we're going to say execute if block. Or well, we're going to change that. So we're going to say execute if score. And we'll have a fake player who we'll just call button. State matches zero. And then we have if block. Okay, so what happens now? Probably nothing, because we've initialized, well, we've created the objective, so it's sitting with no value. So it's not equaling zero, it's equaling null, effectively. So yeah, nothing's happening. Okay, let's put a block on the end. And this block is gonna do a little check to see what this, this button is doing. We will execute a store success as a score in our fake player button into state. If block at those coordinates, can we just, yes, we've still got them saved, okay. Uh, and then it was a polished blackstone button powered equals true. So, if that is successful. So if this is a powered blackstone or polished blackstone button, we'll get one into the score. So this is not gonna run because we're checking the zero. And then when it unpowers, this will become zero and this will run again. So that's probably enough. There we go. Only runs one time. And we can make it a little bit better because let's say I I changed my mind and I wanted, oh, I wanted a lovely mangrove button. Well, it's not working anymore now. Okay, so let's not check for a polished blackstone button. Let's check uh, using a tag and we'll use the Minecraft tag buttons. So that is any button. So now we're checking for any button there. And we'll do the same here. We'll 
change that to Minecraft buttons. And if you're doing a data pack, you can create your own tag lists as well. We, we're not doing those. So now it should work with uh, with any button. So it works with our mangrove button. Um, let's change it for a warped button. And now it's working with the warp button. Okay, super simple, that one. Uh, that is how we have a remote flying button not attached to any command block that will only run one time when you press it. Nice and quick. Okay, see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.